Hi, my name is Maz, and here's my defense on why video games are good for kids. Gamer time. Gaming has evolved to accommodate all different types of gamers. And nowadays, it's as accessible as ever with Minecraft, Fortnite, and established titles. Who sponsored this video, and I'll talk about them later. Whilst my friends and I grew up on classic web browser and free-to-play games, like RuneScape, Neopets, and Club Penguin. And I think the generation before us played with the economy and capitalism. But let's talk about the social aspect of video games. Now, I'm not very good at making friends in real life. But as an extrovert, I do like talking to people, and emotional discussions are fun to navigate. But when it's face to face, there's a point where I just get bored of talking and get like, all right, that's enough now. No more. I'm tired. Sir, this is a funeral. Yeah, okay, but uh, where's the Super Smash Bros? However, with gaming, it's actually beautiful how it all plays out. You get an easily accessible game, pull together a bunch of friends, and either strengthen or tear apart those relationships. There's always something to do, which helps develop a bond between everybody involved, whilst allowing enough opportunity to talk in between. It's a win-win. The amount of times I've gone on Discord and we casually talk about our lives as we're pummeling these noobs online is great. Yeah, so how's the weather going? Yeah. Definitely very it's very no. sun. <gasps> Look, help me, I'm in pain. Just the act of getting together for a common task is enough to build that friendship, especially with the pandemic, since we couldn't go outside to hang out. So having gaming as the glue for friendship online is definitely good for you. Hey guys. Guys? Oh, ignore it again. Oh, I'm muted. Hey, guys. Hey. Hi. Why did you kidnap my dog? See, I'm still close to the friends that I've made from gaming, and it's been years. I'm in pretty regular contact with them, and honestly, I would even invite them over to my actual wedding. That's how close we are, and I've only ever physically seen them a couple of times. Now, do you, Mars of the Amazing, please like, comment, subscribe, take her as your bride. I do. Wait. Who? Who are you people? It's still part of the same experience when people prefer watching games be played instead of actually playing them. As a kid growing up with Achievement Hunter myself, it feels really nice to be able to be part of a community that enjoys watching the same creator play games. Honestly, I feel like it's really easy to look down on people and say, Hey, why are you watching that? Why don't you just play yourself? Oh yeah, old man? Why don't you play football yourself? <laughs> Yeah, he's fine. In the end, video games provide an excellent avenue to satisfy that social itch that we all crave. Ah, uh, how could I forget? Video games are important because it teaches us about the most important thing in life. Money! Most titles incorporate a basic level of economy within their games, ranging from trading emeralds for goods in Minecraft, or to entire village building like in Stardew Valley or Animal Crossing. Children and young adults need these systems to see what they'll be tackling when they're proper adults. And what better teacher than video games? Because it's not like the school curriculum is teaching you proper finances, that's for sure. Do it wrong in video games and you learn new strategies and can even restart. Do it wrong in real life and you end up homeless or in jail. Okay, but what about this? A get out of jail free card? Oh, no, sorry, turn around. Is this a sponsorship? Hey, wait, get back here! Established Titles is a unique project where people can buy their own dedicated bit of land in Scotland. And with this, you can officially change your name to a lord or lady on things like credit cards and plane tickets based off an old historic Scottish custom. <clears throat> Hello, my name is Mr. Dr. Lord Maz. Yay! I trust this guy! Yeah. my brother! I have sacrificed for you! Not only that, established titles will also commemorate you by giving you an official certificate with a unique plot number, which can be used to see the exact location of your land. This is sick! Yeah, it is! The sponsor told me that the first 200 people to click on the link in the description below or use establishedtitles.com slash the amazing will get a plot of land that's located near mine. So if a bunch of you rise up and become more than ladies yourselves, all of the Martians can get together to create the amazing kingdom and take over this planet. And the best part about established Established titles is that they plant a tree for every order that's placed. They work with global charities One Tree Planted and Trees for the Future to support global reforestation efforts. Mwah. You're a good little plant, aren't you? Oh, stop <laughs> it. Stop. There are also last minute gift options and even couple packs that come with two pieces of land that are right next to each other. So once again, make sure to head on over to establishedtitles.com slash the amazing or click on the link in the description below to get your piece of land, become a lord or lady and support my channel. 
See, this is the type of using my finances wisely that gaming taught me. And it's even more educational when games go one step further to implement a realistic economy like in RuneScape. It had a system where you could trade almost any in-game item with other players on what was called the Grand Exchange. You buy and sell items at whatever price you set, which was affected by how everybody else valued those same items. There were even charts that you could use to measure the rise and falls of those items. Or, you know, you could just pretend to be a girl and wait for somebody to give you money. Isn't that right, PJ? Yeah. PJ? There was once a time that I was an owner of hundreds of thousands of coal on RuneScape, which was essential since you needed it to make almost every set of armor in the game. I used to flip that coal, which meant buying it at a low price, then selling it back at a higher price. That little bit of profit, mine to keep. Doesn't sound like a lot for a single piece of coal, but what if you had hundreds of thousands like me? Well, you could keep increasing your profits, be able to crush the coal to make diamonds. I was called good old diamond hands in those times. Now they just call me old carpal tunnel. So I kept flipping coal and got filthy rich, multi-millionaire on his way to RuneScape glory. Even Santa didn't give me coal anymore because he was scared that I would flip it. That is until one day RuneScape announced that it was reworking the entire smithing system specifically to remove coal as the one centrally crucial ingredient. So coal was no longer in high demand and immediately I logged on to the RuneScape economy graph and I watched as the coal dropped from 300 each to 250, 200, 150, and the hundreds and thousands of coal that I held now at half the profit that I bought it for. I lost everything. And I realized that I didn't have diamond hands. It was dirty, stinky coal hands. Ever since then, I've learned to always diversify, and I developed other life lessons that day. Something else I got from playing video games. Okay, so the actual research is sketchy here, but I believe that video games help develop fine motor and important cognitive skills. And you may be saying, Maz, why should we listen to you? You just told us a story about how you lost millions with coal. Oh yeah? Well, my motor skills are off the charts, and you're coal now. The easiest example to think of is like how first-person games help with hand-eye coordination. This is definitely true from my own experience, but take it from my colleagues, who are all doctors by the way, which means they're really smart. I once had a boss in the hospital who did a lot of scope work, which basically meant putting cameras down people's throats. What? <laughs> he said that the actual device that he used looked like a game controller, and mentioned how he learned the techniques faster than his colleagues, because he was a secret gamer. So every single day, he felt like he was just sitting down and gaming with his little toy, maneuvering scopes down patients' throats. Wow, I can't wait to play this on Switch. <laughs> Once again, I know the research not 100% there yet, but if video games weren't helpful, then why do surgeons use augmented reality or VR to train their techniques? It was starting to become a thing whilst I was in med school, and it's becoming more and more accessible as we speak. I would even argue that relaxing, casual games are still useful in imparting skills such as organization, task management, and delegation of responsibilities. Because when I compare the two, I've matured more from the stress of Tetris than I have from playing Foursquare or Hopscotch, which has directly translated into how I handle stress at the hospital. Hey, actually, Mars, I don't think you're being fair to the people who are concerned about video games. I feel like you should steal man your arguments and maybe talk about the negatives. Wow, that's actually quite reasonable. Thank you so much for letting me know. No worries, that's what friends are for. <laughs> Please, sir, I am dying. I think the main reason we're told not to play video games is because it's different from what they've been raised up with. Imagine spending all of your childhood time outside, active, building things in the sunlight, then seeing your kids hold up in the dark, spending hours on end in front of a screen. Or, are you winning, son? <laughs> And it's that constant sitting, eating, and watching the screen that has negative impact. It can range from increased obesity from eating too much and not exercising, or visual issues from constantly staring at the screen, or sleep deprivation and overuse injuries on your wrist and fingers from over-gaming, and genuine concerns regarding overexposure to violence and desensitization. All of those mentioned things are issues that I've definitely dealt with and experienced. Like, seriously, I just kicked an old man early in the video as a joke. And uh, now I'm still here. Oh. I'm glad you're okay. But here's the thing. A lot of these issues occur when you're gaming to an extreme, which can just as easily apply to anything else in life. There are any problems if you were to eat meat, play sports, or even say bazinga. bazinga. But if you go overboard, 
then we have issues. Bazonga. <laughs> so instead of being restrictive with gaming, I think it's important to maybe have proper education surrounding it, just as we would with other hobbies. Play video games with moderation and make sure to mix in proper food, sleep, and exercise. Not like that. Try not to play two hours before bedtime to avoid disrupting your sleep schedule. Make sure to periodically rotate your wrists around to give them a break. Be consistent with the 20-20-20 rule. Every 20 minutes, look at something 20 feet or 6 meters away for 20 seconds to avoid eye strain. And then watch anime for 20 hours. I'm kidding. <laughs> Unless. By incorporating those, you can get the most benefit out of gaming and avoid any of the issues. See, isn't that great for everyone? Now, you know what? Case dismissed. Innocent. Wait a minute. I'm the judge. I'm the one who does that. No. Okay.